Coming up, Ralph Macchio. He played a 98-pound weakling turned karate champ, and he turned the movie Karate Kid into a success story that grossed 90 million bucks. He is Ralph Macchio. Born on Long Island, New York, Ralph George Macchio has always looked younger than his years and always dreamed of being a star. What happened to other guys? Huh? In 1983, his first dream came true when Francis Ford Coppola chose him to play Johnny in the film The Outsiders. They all ran. They all ran off and I stabbed them. But it was the Karate Kid in 1984 that turned Ralph Macchio into a star. It also turned him into a teen idol, gracing every cover of the top teen magazines. And why don't you all just shut up for a minute, all right? Trying to break the angelic Karate Kid character, Ralph played a troubled teen in the movie Teachers, co-starring Nick Nolte. I knew Danny, man. He was just scared. He was always scared here. He wanted to use a gun. He just wanted to make sure nobody got to him, that's all. In 1986, at age 24, Ralph starred in the Karate Kid 2, breaking the box office records of the first film. Live or die, man. That same year, a second dream came true for Ralph when he starred on Broadway with Robert De Niro in Cuba and his teddy bear. In 1988, he took on another dramatic role as the son of a Vietnam vet in the film Distant Thunder with John Lithgow. So now you want me to see you kill yourself? You're my father. How could you care so little? When The Karate Kid 3 was released in 1989, Ralph, although 27 years old and married, was still playing a teen. The film disappointed the critics, and Ralph had played the kid for the last time. Ralph has been married to his wife Phyllis for five years, and they are now expecting their first child. Currently, Ralph is back on screen starring in the film My Cousin Vinny. He felt it was time to do a comedy, and he wanted to work with the film's co-star, Joe Pesci. Ben, you graduated from law school six years ago. What have you been doing since? Studying for the bar. Six years? Uh -huh. That's a lot of studying. Our Jennifer Vallopi spoke to the Karate Kid, who just turned 30 years old. You were 27 years old when Karate Kid, when you were making Karate Kid 3, right? Right, right. Is that right? And you were still playing a kid in high school. Quintessential kid. Why do you think Karate Kid was so successful? It offered, um, offered positives for kids. It offered lessons. Um, it, it was a surrogate father-son. It was family-oriented. It, it's a, you know, the, the Rocky story. It's the underdog story, and, yeah. you know, and, and good prevails over evil. It's all the corny garbage, but it works. How did you actually get involved in acting in the first place? I started dancing, tap dancing, when I was, like, this big. Two and a half? The two and a half, right, exactly. I used to watch the old Gene Kelly and... Fred Astaire movies when I was a little, you know, at home with, you know, my mom or whatever. And, you know, I, I loved to do it as a little kid. And, uh, you know, we put on the, um, the recital at the end of the year. And that was my, you know, I was on stage in the spotlight. And I wasn't great at it, but I enjoyed it. What kind of a kid were you in school? I was never a great student as far as um, uh, grades went. You know, I was a daydreamer. I wanted to be, you know, Michael Corleone, or I wanted to be in this, this film, or I wanted to be Brando and on the waterfront, and, you know, that was always in my mind. I didn't cut class, and, I, you know, I was too afraid of, like, coming home and, like, Dad knowing about it, you know, or Mom telling Dad about it. You know, Mom would find out first, then Dad would find then it's time to go to bed early before he got home. Right? I read somewhere that you once said your parents were your best friends. Uh, my parents are, you know, my parents, and they mean everything parents could mean to someone. I would have to say my, my wife is my best friend. I mean, there's not even, I don't even have to say that. There's like no doubt. Tell me about your wife, Phyllis. How did you meet? How did you fall in love? We met, um, we were teenagers. This is, this is another one of these stories, the violin kind of, oh, how sweet stories. <laughs> Get a cavity listening to this story. <laughs> but we, uh, it's so sweet. We met um, at my cousin's Sweet Sixteen party. We were teenagers, we met, we danced. I mean, it was just so <laughs> pathetic. But we, you know, we just, as soon as we saw each other, I mean, we just enjoyed each other, we dated, and then it just, you know, there's just no one else that I would even think about wanting to be with. 
And, you know, from a very early time, I just knew this was a woman I wanted to marry and spend my life with. So it's corny, but it's true. Was she your first love? My first real love, that's for sure. I mean, I would say, yeah, definitely. And I bet you don't believe in divorce. No, I divor there's no reason to get married if you believe in divorce. So your first and only love? My first and only love. How did you propose? Well, if you want to, you, you want yeah. to sap, make it sweet. <laughs> <but laughs> yeah, I want Valentine's <laughs> Day. <laughs> oh dear. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, America. <laughs> it's just you know, we're, it's just cornball. <laughs> and here I am saying, oh, the Karate Kid image is so sweet. I'm nothing like that kind of. Guy. <laughs> oh God, I'm burying myself. No, it was Valentine's Day, and we just went out to dinner, and then we, you know, just I just proposed. And she said? She said yes. <laughs> I can't come up with anything more exciting than that. It's just what it was. Yeah. You've been married to Phyllis for five years now? Right, five years in April. And you're actually expecting a child very yes, soon. Yes, I am. Yes, we are. Yes, I'm going to take all the credit. My wife is carrying this baby. But uh -huh. yes, it's very exciting. What kind of father are you going to be? I'd like to be um, a lot of fun, attentive, um, loving, caring, mm -hmm. and for lack of a much better word, I don't want to say strict because I don't like that word, but but I think um, I think too many kids run their parents now. And when I was a kid, you know, you were at the table, you sat at the table, the adults ate, you didn't speak until it was time for the kids to join in, and when you were done eating, you asked to be excused or you waited till everyone was finished, and I don't think that's bad. My wife and I talk about this because I think it's important that um, that a child be disciplined, but that also that a child also feels love and has 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 fun with his or her parents. Because we don't know if it's a boy or a girl. We're waiting. We're old fashioned. Why did you choose not to to find out whether it's a boy or a girl? I just I don't know. I think that's a that's something. What do they say? If God if God intended you to know, He would have sent you a postcard. I think that at least for the first child, you have that opportunity. You have this gift of this child, and you have the opportunity to not know, to at the moment it's born, through all that excitement, to have the not knowing what it is, you know? And then it's a boy, it's a girl, it's a, it's a matter of just being so happy at that moment, and you just accept what it is, and that's what it should be. Your life seems to be um, pretty ideal. It's mm -hmm. pretty darn good. Mm -hmm. You live on Long Island mm -hmm. uh, with your with your wife and and about to be child right. and not too far away from your parents. Right. Why'd you leave Hollywood? It's just a tough town to live in. It's the business is all over the place. For me, you can't get away from the the business, the industry, in some way. And it's you get it's so easy to get drawn in. It's like an undertow that someone else is faces up on the billboard you were on a year ago and that billboard was much smaller than you on when you were on it but it's still the same size seems much bigger when other people are on it you know it's um my family's back in new york yeah. it's just home that's all there is to it. i grew up there and it's, when i'm there it reminds me of home it is home do you consider yourself an old-fashioned kind of guy pretty much pretty much i say that like that because i am pretty old-fashioned Family values is what's the most important thing. So if that's old-fashioned, then I'm that.